All right, hello everybody. So I'm back to unfortunately crappy cell phone video here, um, but that's the only way I can really do this. And I apologize for the noise here, but um, I'm gonna try to talk over this as best I can. But anyways, I wanted to do a short video here about your water chiller or your electron microscope and specifically how to make sure you get optimal performance out of it and how you can set it to allow your microscope to perform optimally, okay? So, first thing you have to understand is that the reason most electron microscopes, and I say most because there are a small number that do not have a water cooling system, okay, but the vast majority of them do, uh, the reason that's there is to prevent damage to the lenses. So the lenses generate a tremendous amount of heat via you know the current that's going through the coils and that has to be dissipated somehow and if it's not dissipated then the coils end up frying and your you know your microscope then is damaged and you can't use it so you have to have a way to cool the lenses so that's where your water chiller comes in okay and so the water chiller does two things it a chills the water obviously and b it pumps that water through your microscope okay so you can see here on this particular chiller here we've got this guy the green number that's the measured temperature in Celsius and this is the set point and this is typically what most uh, microscopes do um, as far as the the cooling temperature it's usually set around 20 degrees Celsius and you can see there's a small amount of fluctuation, but you know that's perfectly normal. Okay, and so usually, you know, with very little variation, this is about what you're gonna you're gonna set your uh, chiller temperature to be. Now, as far as the pressure, uh, some chillers have more control over this than others. On this microscope, um, or this chiller, I should say, we actually don't have the ability on the chiller side to control the pressure out of it so we just you know we get what comes out of it I think it's about 20 or 30 psi and that's plenty actually for what we need to do okay so that's the important thing now the other thing you have to understand okay I'm over at the microscope here okay so when you're operating the microscope and that water is circulating around the lenses that obviously can impart some, you know, potentially some vibration to the system, okay? And obviously that's not good, right? Because vibration will result in, you know, an image that's shaky, has instability and whatnot. I'm gonna go ahead and, well, I'm gonna leave the chase open. I'll just close the door for a second here, <clears throat> okay? Okay, so obviously we don't want that. You don't want a, an image that vibrates, okay? Um, but, if the flow through the microscope is insufficient, then the, the, um, the chiller will not work properly either, okay? So in order for that set point to be hit on the chiller, you have to have sufficiently high flow. This was an issue I ran into for a while actually on this specific microscope. This is a dual beam fib right here, Helios Nano Lab. But with this chiller here, let me show you again. With this chiller, I was, I wasn't able to get this thing down to 20 degrees, okay? It was up around like almost 30, which is really high. And obviously that's not good for the microscope, okay? But the reason that it was happening was I wasn't getting enough flow, uh, water flow through the microscope itself, okay? And that's not an issue with the chiller, that's actually an issue at the microscope end. Okay, so if we come over here and this is obviously different on every microscope, but on this specific one, I've got the side panel removed. Okay, you can see right here, there are two flow meters, and these guys control the flow of water uh, through the microscope, okay? So you could have, obviously, the pressure coming out of the chiller, we can't do anything about it on this specific chiller, but we can control the flow through the microscope with these two flow meters, okay? 
And so this is where you have to set the flow to an optimum value. So when I say optimum, that means basically you want the flow high enough that the chiller can hit the set point, okay? But you don't want it so high that it is causing potential image instability, okay? So there's an optimal level. Basically, or another way you could think of it is you need to set the flow as low as you can so the chiller still can conduct heat away, okay? Obviously, that's, you know, that's kinetics 101, right? Faster moving water is more effective at removing heat, okay, than, than slower water. So, so you can actually see here, right, these, let me change my hands here. So these actually right here, these were where the factory or the manufacturer actually set the flow meters to on the tool. But when we had these, you can see here, there's two little bobbers, okay? So according to the original specs, these should be down, you know, down here. Okay, you can see they're much higher than this. Okay, the reason was when they were down there, there wasn't enough water flow to cool the lenses properly, right? The chiller wasn't hitting the set point. It was up around 30 degrees Celsius. So these had to be uh, increased um, substantially, okay, to the point that the chiller actually was gonna hit the set point. And I've actually looked at the image and I can verify that there isn't any instability, okay? And that's obviously what you would need to do, okay? And obviously there's also um, a time component to this. So if you make an adjustment to the flow, the change to the chiller temperature is not going to be something that happens immediate. Um, this was something that over really like a few days I had to tweak until I got the flow set just right at the microscope so that the mic the uh, the chiller was hitting the set point okay so that's the video I wanted to do today talking about you know the chiller what it's used for and how to properly set the flow so you get you know the optimum performance for your microscope okay uh, a couple other things to go over here as far as maintenance of the chiller so most of the chillers have an inline filter like this this usually needs to be swapped out, you know, every six months, usually, about that much. Um, obviously, if the filter gets too dirty, then your flow is compromised there as well. This is obviously self-contained, so you wouldn't think there's gonna be, you know, a whole lot of debris going in and out here, but we do change it um, usually about every six months uh, to make sure the, uh, the flow is going properly, okay? All right. So that is the video I wanted to do um, about water chillers, okay? Obviously, you can kind of see, yeah, it's kind of hard to see from there, but you can kind of see right there in the middle, um, those two flow meters. Obviously, not a very good angle from here. But anyways, um, some microscopes have this. I, I know all the, um, this is an FEI. These all have these, uh, these, bob, these bobber uh, flow meters here. I'm not sure about other ones, but anyways. So that's just a short video I wanted to do about uh, water chillers and how to set yours for optimal microscope performance, okay? So uh, if you have any questions, uh, please let me know. And uh, sorry I had to go back to the cell phone video, but there really wasn't any other way to do this. So, all right, look forward to seeing you guys again soon.